Once my shepherd I not want He makes me lie in pastures green He leads me by the still, still waters His goodness restores my soul and I will trust in you and I will trust Hello. If you're a, a regular at our church, I do hope you uh, noticed before all the um, lockdown stuff kicked in that our front lobby has recently been renovated and repainted and in the process it gained a bible text on the wall facing the entrance in fact you saw it in the opening frames of this service we think it's a good way to welcome you to our premises but we're not the only ones uh, wanting to extend a welcome to people through something put up in an entrance a little while ago i heard someone read out a notice that went up think a couple of years ago now in the entrance to Coventry the Cathedral this is what it says under the heading a cathedral welcome we extend a special welcome to those who are single married divorced widow straight gay confused well healed or down at heel. We especially welcome wailing babies and excited toddlers. We welcome you whether you can sing like Pavarotti or just growl quietly to yourself. You're welcome here if you're just browsing, just woken up, or just got out of prison. We don't care if you're more Christian than the Archbishop of Canterbury or haven't been to church since Christmas uh, 10 years ago. We extend a special welcome to those who are over 60, but not grown up yet, and to teenagers who are growing up all too fast. We welcome keep fit mums, football dads, starving artists, tree huggers, latte sippers, vegetarians, and junk food eaters. We welcome those who are in recovery or still addicted. We welcome you if you are having problems are down in the dumps or don't like organized religion. We are not too keen on that either. We often welcome those who think the earth is flat, work too hard, don't work, can't spell, or are here because granny is visiting and wanted to come to the cathedral. We welcome those who are inked, pierced, both or neither. We offer a special welcome to those who could use a prayer right now, have had religion shoved down their throats as kids, or got lost on the ring road and wound up here by mistake. We welcome pilgrims, tourists, seekers, doubters, and you. I don't think we've got enough wall space to put up something like that, nor as a reader in a readable sized font that uh, could be read as you came in anyway. But we have put up in our interests that Bible text. If you can't rem quite remember what it is, it's a verse from the Bible that encapsulates all of what the cathedral notice so eloquently spelt out. It's only one verse, it's John 3.16. And I'll remind you what it says. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The next two verses in John chapter 3 basically say, it's down to you alone whether you accept or don't that invitation. Since we aren't too far off thinking about what Good Friday was about, I don't need to emphasize what this invite cost the inviter. Or as the old chorus that you might recall I used a while back, uh, from my younger days put it there's a way back to god 
from the dark paths of sin, a door that is open that you may go in. At Calvary's cross is where you begin, when you come as a sinner to Jesus. I've never been invited to a party at Buckingham Palace. I know people who have, and I once missed out on an invite to St. James's Palace, but uh, that was because I wasn't at home, and the charity I was working with at that time were looking for people to go there, and I was out. But I did, but sorry if I did, get an invite to Buckingham Palace. I'd be doing everything in my power to make sure I took up that invite. And here in one sentence, we have an invite from the King of Kings, the Lord Almighty, the living God. And since it's to all the uh, whosoevers, you're included. So what have you done with it? Or if nothing so far, what are you going to do with it this morning? I'll read it once more. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life.
Hi everyone, here are the matters of prayer for this week. Stan writes, praise God for the support we're getting from specialist people like pharmacists and opticians. Gail asks us to continue to pray for Maya, who is neutrophenic, which means she has a low white cell uh, count and has had chemo stopped. Pray that her bloods will return to normal so she continue, can continue her treatment. She's also asked us to pray for protection for all the family, that they stay healthy at this difficult time. Anne asks us to include Janet, a friend, in our prayers. Her mother died last Wednesday and her brother the following day. Please pray for Janet and her brother's family as they grieve this double loss. Stuart writes, thank you for our prayers, your prayers for Carol, who has a shoulder problem we mentioned in an email last week. Our GP gave her an injection to ease the pain. She's feeling a bit better, but she will need to see an orthopaedic doctor. But the earliest date is September 2020. He will contact one of the private hospitals to find out the cost. As we know, they are expensive. They will know sometime ne this next week. But he writes, we keep trusting. Our God is an awesome God who specialises in things thought impossible. Please also pray for two of Carol's cousins, Roderick Peterson, Peterson, who is terminally ill, and Mark Collop. After Stuart was ministering to them, they surrendered their lives to Christ. This happened just a few weeks before our lockdown. Stuart stopped discipling them because of the COVID-19, but he is in contact with them through social media. Pray that they will remain faithful and committed to Jesus. And remember, Darren was asking for prayer for his grandfather, who is waiting to be taken into heaven. Pray for the family as they wait and grieve. So let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we enjoy your love to us and in thankfulness for all we have you have done and are doing, we worship you. We bless your name for your mighty power is saving and keeping us. Thank you for the blessings to Stan and Margaret from pharmacy and opticians. We continue to cry out to you for Maya. Please heal her, develop white blood cells in her, enable chemo to continue. But please, Father, bring her back to full health and strength. And we pray for Gail's whole family that you may sustain them in health, physically and mentally and spiritually, that they may come to trust you for their salvation and daily living. And for Anne's friend Janet, we ask that you comfort her in this time of grieving over the deaths of mother and brother. We pray for her grief and that of her brother's family, that it will not overwhelm them, but you will reveal your presence to her. We lift Carol up to you. Thank you for the, that the medication has eased the pain, but we pray for healing and restoration and full function of her shoulder. May there be a quicker way for her to be treated than to wait until September. And for Carol's cousins, Roderick and Mark, we ask that you keep them by your Holy Spirit, that that seed of new life which is germinated in them will grow to maturity and that they may thrive spiritually in the coming days. And we pray over Darren's grandfather that you will take him to be with you. But in the meantime, Lord, that you will keep him safe in his mind and his health, in his body. And we pray for Darren and the family as they grieve over the loss of an aunt and they wait for yet another uh, 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 death. We just lift them up to you and pray that you'll sustain them in these coming days. For ourselves, we pray that you'll keep us cheerful, looking to you for sustaining grace that the isolation we all face will be a blessing rather than a curse because you are with us. Your rod and your staff are comfort to us. Be with us by your Holy Spirit that we may bless others to your praise and glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our souls be a sign. We are here.
Gospel chapter 28. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. 
and this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. All the Gospels, as we call them, end with resurrection stories and the ascension because, and only because, they are telling the story of Jesus physically walking on earth. Acts Luke is the exception, moving on to the Holy Spirit age in which we now live. Matthew's account is quite abbreviated. Maybe he was running out of parchment to write on. What we have is two recorded meetings of the women, one with an angel and the next with Jesus himself. Then there is a reference to the guards and their tale. Jesus' meeting with his disciples is condensed to one event in Galilee where he commissions them and tells us all to go. There is much more in Luke and John, but I want to concentrate on Matthew's record for one reason. Once you accept that the resurrection has happened, what next? Or as the title I was given was, when death was yesterday's news, what next? I cannot underline how important the resurrection is. It is the evidence of Jesus' divinity. It is the seal of his completed work of salvation on the cross. It is the final piece of the, of the story of Jesus here on earth. A few weeks ago, Sam discussed some of the evidences of the resurrection because it is key to our faith. As Paul says, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, you are still in your sins. If for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. Then he goes on to say, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, Adam, and resurrection of the, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man, Jesus. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ will all be made alive. The death of Jesus paid the price of our freedom, propitiated for our sin, brought us forgiveness and healing. The resurrection of Jesus kickstarts new life. Eternal life comes from him, demonstrated by his resurrection, making death itself defeated and life beyond the grave a reality. But what is our reason to be now our sins are forgiven and we have eternal life? Are we just hanging around waiting to die so we can join Jesus in heaven? It is quite significant that the resurrection is most celebrated at funerals. Commonly, Christians' funerals begin with, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives in and by believing in me will never die. And my favoured reading at the graveside in the crematorium comes from 1 Corinthians 15. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. Then the saying that was written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. In these grim days, we need to grasp the significance of the resurrection. COVID-19 may kill the body, but death is defeated. Dying may be horrible, but it leads to eternal life for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
In our worrying about this pandemic, get our eyes fixed on the resurrected Jesus. It is Jesus who says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So we do not pray for the dead because Jesus says whoever believes has eternal life. You have eternal life now. It is growing inside you since God implanted new life in you as you turn from your sin and by faith grasp the hand of the Saviour. Jesus comes to his disciples who are just the same sort of mixture of people as we are at different points in their journey of faith. Some worshipped, it says, others doubted. To all of them, he has a special message, a directive, a blueprint, an action plan for the rest of this age. Here it is. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Those words are very familiar to us as the Great Commission, but it's full of astounding statements. I'm just going to point out six, and I'm not going to go into detail in any of them. But here are six amazing things that Jesus says in this statement. First of all, he claims to be the world ruler. Secondly, the mission of these Jewish men is to make disciples of all nations, not just the Jews. The direct declaration over baptism is of a triune God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> His teaching is sufficient and complete for life. Then he says he will be with all of them all of the time, wherever they go. And number six, this new age has an end. Now, Jesus was ever the revolutionary, but he does not seek power. He is calling for his disciples to carry the message to all who will hear it, believe it and receive it. And we believe that this commission is for all disciples, not just the ones on the mountain in Galilee. So when death is yesterday's news, recognise afresh who Jesus is. In this world, not Trump nor Putin, nor Xi Jinping, Boris Johnson, Mohammed, Buddha, your or me or anybody else is the ruler. Jesus has the power and authority, but he expresses it differently to us. He extends his kingdom by dying on a cross for us, inviting us to receive salvation and live the new resurrection life. He was the word of creation. Now he is the king who has laid down his life for his creation. Now he is the living saviour and Lord to whom every knee should bow and will bow. And Jesus says, go. Hold on. Not just yet. Remember, you have to stay at home at present. But we are required to go. And it's not just for missionaries and church ministers. It's for everyone. Even the housebound. What? Listen, we live in an age where communication covers the world. You are a rare person if you don't have a phone or internet connection. You know, at least one of our fellowship heard about Jesus through someone thousands of miles away. Because they use the systems of this world for the glory of God to go and make disciples of all nations. So while you're sitting at home wondering how all this is going to turn out, get busy. Use your phone. Use your text messaging. Use your email, WhatsApp, Signal, Zoom, Facebook, Twitter, whatever else you use to tell others the good news of the kingdom. We have been worshipping together this morning in a way we wouldn't have imagined a month ago. 
Thanks to Darren's hard work, the church has moved out of Dean Avenue into your front room. Praise the Lord for his enabling by his Holy Spirit to equip us for this time. But it isn't for us to enjoy alone. This good news is eager to reach out to your family, your neighbours, your friends, anyone you know. How? By talking to them. Look, you enjoy receiving a phone call. So make someone happy by ringing them. And even better, build a relationship so you can share your story of how Jesus discovered, you discovered Jesus is alive and living in your heart. <clears throat> Secondly, get to know what Jesus said. In fact, get to know all the Bible. <clears throat> I've been putting extracts of what Jesus said on Twitter and Facebook for years. I have 768 sayings of Jesus and I haven't included yet what he says in Revelation or what he says through the Apostles and the Old Testament. There is a lot to learn and sometimes relearn. So make sure you get into the habit of reading God's word every day. Absorb the teaching of Jesus. It is the most important knowledge you can ever know. Thirdly, Jesus promises 12 men that he will be with them always. They in a few years will be dispersed. Thomas, we know, went to India, Paul to Western Europe and the others all over the known, known world. <clears throat> How did he keep his promise? He returned to the Father and sent the third person of God, the Holy Spirit. Jesus called his disciples to follow him as he lived and moved about Israel. The Holy Spirit is not tied to a physical body as he is with each disciple. He has the capacity be, to be with you and me and Christians all over the world at the same time. So the command follow me does not mean being in one place together but going out into the whole world. Church as we know it has changed in the last few weeks, but the commission and the means remain the same. The challenge today is to go while sitting at home. <coughs> it begins with prayer. Start praying for a vision of how, God, how you will respond to the command to go. Pray over everyone you know and then make contact. And then pray again and respond to the stirring of the Holy Spirit to tell your story about what God has done in your life. Who knows? Maybe the first opportunity when we are able to meet again will be a mass baptism of all those God who God has called and we have faithfully taught the good news to.
Good morning, Judge. Today we are celebrating birthdays. We have Brian Taylor, uh, Wednesday. Happy birthday. Then we also have on the this Thursday is Lee Chapman. Lee Chapman on this Thursday. Happy birthday. And we have Emily uh, Mickelson on Sunday. On Sunday. And Jean Peters, you just had your birthday this Saturday. So happy birthday to you. And let's let's all pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the celebrations we have. We thank you for birthdays, Lord. And Lord, we pray that the birthdays will be special, even, Lord, while they're having isolation. But I still pray, Lord, that they'll find something to be happy about. And dear Heavenly Father, we just pray, Lord, for all of us, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that we will seek your peace. And we just pray, Lord, that you will bless us and keep us and we may praise your name forevermore in Jesus name Amen Amen everybody and I'll see you next Sunday Goodbye